we have two planes here, they're both flying at 80 meters per second. That means they have the same speed. Okay, however, they have different velocities because they're both going in different directions. And if you remember, velocity is a vector, so it includes its direction as well. Now, speed is defined as a rate of change of distance, while velocity is defined as a rate of change of displacement. The words in bold here, they're both vectors. Displacement is a vector, so it's velocity. It means that they both have directions as well. Instead of writing rate of change, you can also write per unit time. So speed, for example, can be defined as change in distance per unit time instead of saying rate of change of distance. This leads to the equation for speed or velocity. It doesn't matter. It depends if you're considering the direction or not. So if we pretend this is velocity, that's in meters per second. Also notice how I'm using ms of minus one. That's the same as writing meters per second like so, except I'm using these indices notation, which you'll learn at A-level maths. Okay, S stands for displacement, that's measured in meters, and time, it should be measured in seconds like this. Now, technically, the equation is better if it's written like this, where we've got change of displacement over change of time. Okay, this is more accurate. Okay, example number one, the car is moving at a uniform velocity. So that basically means a constant speed and a constant direction, because uniform means constant or the same. Okay, it's moving at a unit velocity of 20 meters per second. Calculate the distance traveled in one minute. Okay, let's visualize this. So let's say the car initially at time t equals zero is at zero meters. After one second, it would travel 20 meters. After two, uh, two seconds, tw uh, 40 meters. And three seconds, 60 meters. So basically every second is traveling 20 meters. That's what 20 meters per second means. Okay, so if you want to find the distance traveled after a certain amount of time, all you have to do is velocity times time. So 20 meters per second times 60 seconds. So because I can't use minutes, I have to use seconds. And that gives me 120, 1,200 meters. Okay, what about if it's speeding up or if it's slowing down or even if it's changing direction? Well, then you have to use acceleration. So acceleration is a rate of change of velocity. That's the definition of it. Change of velocity can be, like I said, speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. In this video, we're only going to look at speeding up and slowing down. The equation for this is acceleration is equals change in velocity over change in time. But more likely, you'll use it like so, where we've got acceleration in meters per second squared. V is the final velocity minus u, which is the initial velocity. So that the, the v minus u is the change in velocity. And at the bottom, we've got time or even change in time if you want it. Example two, a car starts from rest. So from rest means stationary or is not moving at the start, basically, and accelerates uniformly. So it means that it's speeding up, but it's speeding up at a steady rate, it means the speed is increasing by a certain amount each second. So in this case, five meters per second squared. So that means it's five meters per second squared or five meters per second every second. So let's visualize this. So at t equals zero is starting at stationary, so it's not moving at the start. After one second, it's going to be moving at five meters per second. After two seconds, it's going to be moving at 10 meters per second. And after three seconds, it's going to be moving at five, 15 meters per second. So as you can see, it's, its speed is increasing, but a steady rate every unit of time. Also notice how the distance is traveling is getting larger every second. Okay, so in the first second, it only covered a certain amount of distance, while in the third second, it covered a much larger distance. That's because it's speeding up and towards the end is traveling at a higher velocity. So if I want to calculate the velocity at some other point in time, let's say 15 seconds later, like the question asks here, I'll, I'll just have to do acceleration times time. So five meters per second squared times 15 seconds, it would be moving at 75 meters per second. The final example, a bird flying at 22 meters per second encounters a gust of wind which causes it to decelerate at a rate of 5.20 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's the acceleration, but because it's a deceleration, we have to use it as a negative number. And the 22 meters per second, that's the initial speed, so that's u, and that's positive. Okay, and then we've got the gust lasts for 6.0 seconds, so that's time. Okay, I'm going to rearrange all of this in a way that's more easier for me to see. I'm going to write SUVAT, okay, S-U-V-A-T. I'm going to fill the information in. So S is the displacement, which I don't know and I don't really care about, so I'm going to rub that out. Okay, U is initial velocity, which is 22. Final velocity V, that's what the question is asking me for. So that's a question mark there. Acceleration, negative 5.20 meters per second squared. Time, which lasts for six seconds. Okay, which SUVAT has all of these in it? It's A equals V minus U over T, the one that we saw today. 
and then I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to make V the subject of the equation, so bring T to the top, and then pr plus U to both sides. And then I'm going to put the numbers in, so acceleration is minus 5.2 times time, which is 6 seconds, plus the initial speed, which is 22. That gives me a final speed of minus 9.2 meters per second. Okay, um, that means it's going backwards. The negative implies that the bird has been blown by the gust of wind so much so that it's actually going, now it's going the opposite direction. Okay, and the question says appropriate number of significant figures. So let's look at how many significant figures the data that we've been given is to. So the 22.0, that's three significant figures. The 5.20, that's three significant figures. The 6.0, that's two significant figures. Okay, notice how this is not to do with decimal places. It's all about significant figures, which are the important numbers. So because we've got three and two, we can't be more precise than our least precise measurement. So that means we have to go for the smallest number of significant figures, that's two significant figures, and 9.2 is already two significant figures, so that's fine. Finally, we just need to give the units, which is meters per second as the final speed, and that's it.